Welcome to the Horse Talk Show. Have you ever seen a horse who could talk? With your host, Louisa Barton, who really wants to be a famous rider. She really loves to ride fast. Presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. The thing is, I have horses with people problems. Now here's the Brit on the bit, Louisa Barton. Enjoy the show. Larson Farms is our TV broadcast sponsor. Mr. Richard Larson, a man of great integrity, cares about every single bale of hay and about taking care of his customers. He also has a huge heart for those genuinely in need. Larson Farms, Idaho's finest alfalfa. The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Thank you for joining us this week on the Horse Talk Show, presented by Peterson Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. Thank you to Larson Farms, our television broadcast sponsor. Idaho's finest alfalfa. Dancing Pete Roder here with Louisa Barton, and we have a fantastic show lineup for you ooh, this ooh. evening. We know we have the Florida Mounted visiting us to talk a little bit about uh, some of the amazing celebration that we enjoyed yesterday at the Florida National Cemetery. It was quite a tearjerker. We're going to share that with you shortly. But just to let you know who else is on the show, we have Maria Alfoon here in the studio with us. She's going to talk a little bit about a new endeavor of hers. While she's not massaging people and horses, she has something else underway. We're going to tell you about that shortly. So you'll enjoy that and you've got a tip here this week from Dr. Adam K. Ott at Peterson Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care to do with horse allergies. We know we like to end up dealing with those about this time of year. And then a couple of segments with the Florida Mounted. Then of course we'll get to our segment at the end where Pete's got his tip of the week, an Ocala Dog Ranch and of course Pat Myers Electric. But let's start off with the reading program that's coming up. Ooh. And you know it is the wonderful organization. I saw George briefly in the parking lot today and waved at him. I was in a hurry, but uh, wonderful people, George and Debbie from Gentle Carousel Miniature Therapy Horses will be starting their summer reading with horses. June 6th at 10 a.m. downtown at the market. Yes. Don't miss it. Uh, they're going to read the books to the children, and then the main character of the book is going to come walking out. So it's going to be something special. If you haven't been able to come out to see this you need to come out and see this it is amazing it really is and it the young children love it but you know the older children and the adults love it too and it's free for everybody which is a wonderful blessing from gentle carousel miniature therapy horses and thanks to uh, pat myers electric they are the sponsor of the very very first one the june 6th one so uh, make sure you come down and thank them and meet the horse and it's going to be a fantastic event so that's the first one i believe of six and once again uh, the spark of it ocala so of course they're absolutely. they're sparking it up with gentle carousel it doesn't get much better than that that's right so the belmont stakes is the third race in the triple crown race is coming right up on us very very quickly here and even though we don't have a triple crown prospect this year because the same horse didn't win the derby and the preakness it's still exciting and what's probably most exciting about this grade one two million dollar three-year-old thoroughbred race which is running one and a quarter miles instead of the usual one and a half and it's running in saratoga instead of uh the usual belmont because that's under construction so it's a little bit different this year but still a very exciting race you need to be watching that on june the 8th and so far what we have here is a lot of Ocala Marion County connections and we love to mention those so I'm just going to tell you about the ones that I know about <laughs> and that is because I usually miss one or two because there are always so many. Uh, Dornosh actually trained here with Rail Reyes here in Ocala Marion County. Fierceness of course trained at Ocala Stud. We were watching Fierceness pretty closely for the Derby. Maybe see him make a comeback in this race since he skipped out on the Preakness in the middle. Honor Marie, who we got to interview the owners there at the Derby. Very exciting horse. I always want to call her a mare, even though she's a he. <laughs> <laughs> Honor Marie, it gets me every time. Mystic Dan, of course, our Kentucky Derby winner, sees the gray who uh, won the Preakness and also trained here. Mystic Dan, of course, trained here. Sierra Leone trained here. 
and Tuscan Gold trained at Stone Street Stables and actually Jenna Rivera, who's a very good friend of ours and is here on the show often with us, actually did was not the regular exercise rider of Tuscan Gold but has ridden Tuscan Gold. So lots of close connections to home here in the Belmont Stakes. So Wow, we should be called K Kentucky now, right? Because we're taking over. <laughs> Ocala. We've already taken over. Oh, okay. <laughs> We've already taken over. Well, you always think horse racing is all Kentucky, right. you know, even though they do it in New York and different places, but hey, Ocala. Yeah. Horse capital of the world. That's right. We are indeed. So again, right now what we're looking at is over two thirds of the horses in the Belmont Stakes got their foundation training right here in the Ocala Marion County area. So we'll be um, bringing that to you closer as we get closer to that date. We'll be bringing you more details. And I'm gonna check out those other horses that have added in here to see if I can connect them in any way to our local area. So it's so definitely not as many horses as we had at the Kentucky Derby. Well, maybe. There's oh. three I haven't checked out yet. So okay. give me a bit. <laughs> Speaking of how incredibly hot it's been, how hot has it been? It's been really hot, <laughs> especially if you were wearing black yesterday. Yes, <laughs> For Memorial Day outside. But what an amazing experience that was. It's hot, let's jump. IDS Dock Diving Tournament coming right up June 1st to 2nd. Look at that dog. Now that dog looks happy. This is International Dog Sports in Ocala Dog Ranch right here in Ocala, Marion County, June 1st and 2nd, 9 a.m. Your dog can cool off in the pool. I think during the dock diving, it needs to be like a rodeo where they have a clown and he has a hose and hoses the crowd off. This is a great idea. I know. Why don't you take up that role? Hey, you I... You would be a very good rodeo clown. Yeah, that's what all my friends used to say is I missed my calling. <laughs> you did. They'd call me up, who ran a rodeo? Neil Hennessy of Color Dog <laughs> Ranch. You and Pete need to discuss this after the show tonight. <laughs> and I think all the, the spectators would love to be hosed off at that point. Nah, definitely. You could be misting everybody. That's right. You'd have a mist zone so people who don't well, want to. We can raise money for <laughs> the dogs for vocal or That's something. That's a good idea. There you go. What a plan. Huh. Or open hands animal rescue. How there you that? go. <laughs> I like it. It's a good plan. <laughs> this is an excellent plan. Uh, and then again, speaking of being hot. Heck, we cool down. What an amazing Oh, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me in a black hat. And oh, this. okay. Look, I'm so cooled down, my eyes are shut. Um, this was wonderful to see. I was out with uh, Muriel, who is now a distributor for Equi Cool Down, but this was a great product to see actually in action. This horse, Peter, was enjoying being cooled off very much so. This blanket, once you lightly hose it, mist it, this blanket actually keeps the cool for much, much longer than you could stand there for 30 minutes hosing your horse, but this will do it for you, and it's pretty amazing, and leg wraps and a neck wrap, and Peter actually started slobbering and chewing and yawning and relaxing and just enjoying the fact that he was not so super hot anymore, so... Speaking of being super you know, When I was at the university, we had the Olympics, and at Georgia, they did a lot of experiments where they dumped ice water to see if it had any effect, because a lot of people go, oh no, you gotta start with the legs, and they found that it didn't have that effect, like getting them cool was the important thing, so mm -hmm. that's it great, is. that's a great product. That's fantastic, yeah, and if you don't wanna stand there the entire time hosing your horse, if it's taking a long time to cool them down, you can, once you spray that, the technology in it actually holds that cold in, and you can feel it for, gosh, I think I felt it 30 minutes later, and it was still cold on the horse, yeah. which is really, really phenomenal. So um, excellent product indeed. We've got to wrap it up. We're going to come right back uh, with Dr. Adam Kayot, and we're also going to be chatting to Maria Arfoon. So stay with us on the Horse Talk Show. We'll be right back. This portion of the Horse Talk Show is brought to you by Peterson Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care, our television broadcast sponsor, Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa, and supporting sponsors, DAC Minerals and Vitamins, Seminole Feed Stores, Lip Chip, Piranha, Pat Myers Electric, Florida HVAC Services, and Ocala Dog Ranch. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, 
and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to feeddac.com. DAC, it makes a world of difference. Equestrian, it's not just a word, but a title. It comes paired with hard work, discipline, and talent. Lipchip is a company built by equestrians to make life at the barn a little easier. Introducing the Hoofling system, powered by Lipchip, where a microchip becomes a secure key to unlock temperature, register for your next event, and keep track of required documents. Simply implant, scan, and unlock. Equestrians, the future is here, and the future is Lipchip. The team of professionals at Equifence of Florida specialize in equestrian fencing, offering great communication, quality fencing, and all done in a timely manner. Reliable service with horse safety in mind all the time. Also offering customized residential, vinyl, wood, aluminium, and chain link fences services. Equifence of Florida, quality fencing done right to keep your animals safe. For more information, find Equifence of Florida on Facebook now. from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Kayout with Peterson Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care for your tip of the week. Horses that have allergies. We have a program where we can uh, pull blood on them to find out exactly what they're allergic to. So contact your veterinarian and they can pull blood, see what the allergy is, and then the company develops a inoculation program that can lessen your uh, horse's allergic response to those allergens. Dr. Adam Kayot talking about allergies, certainly something that we see a lot more in people and animals at this time of year. Summertime does seem to be uh, kind of a bit of a precursor for that. So it was very interesting, Bugs. yes. It was very interesting actually to find out that they very much, just like they do for people, can actually do an allergy test on a horse and find out. The scary part about that, of course, is you might find out your horse is allergic to everything. There's so many <laughs> things they can be allergic to. The hoop, like They're allergic horses. to Florida? Right. Yes, like me, allergic to Florida. Louisa Barton here with Dancing Pete Rhoda from Complimentary Horsemanship, and we have a very special guest, co-host, who comes in and visits us not regularly enough. To but get inspired? That's right, get here. inspired, yes. Maria Arfoon from Midnight Rose Equestrian. I just want to say that if I go more than a couple of weeks visiting my chiropractor, I end up extremely uncomfortable, neck and shoulders. And if I manage to get in and see Dr. Bruce and then follow that up with a visit to Midnight Rose Equestrian and get a massage with Maria, it is an absolute game changer. She can do miracles for horses and people and she does m absolute miracles for me. And when I leave there, I am a different person ready to go to sleep. Quiet. And I actually eat yeah, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm quiet after a massage. So. Yeah, she can't do a massage before the show, otherwise no, I'd, I'd be doing all the, the whole talking. Thing. <laughs> well, don't you might like that. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to talk a little bit for a minute about 
Maria's new endeavor. Maria, you're working on a new project. Yes, so my sister and I have started a new YouTube channel slash Instagram, TikTok, all of those things. And it's called American Horse Story, where we follow like my journey as I touch amazing people and amazing horses and just try to like educate the public and kind of give them a different view of the horse world. And it's fun because it's me and my sister and we're both Samoan. And so it's like, we don't see a lot of, some th there's me. Um, <laughs> I, I'm the firstborn, so I get to be special. Just kidding. But she probably wants to punch me in the face. But it's, it's great because we have a lot of outtakes like that. You'll get to see me cry by episode three. In episode one, you are one of like the uh, interviewees on underneath the sheets for some massage media. Yes, I was worried about that because I generally fall asleep. And about halfway through, I realized she asked me a question. And I'm not entirely sure what I answered her no, with. No. I just know that I'm slurring and that I'm asleep. I mean, I just know this. So, yeah. Yeah. so it was an yeah. answer from the universe. <laughs> Well, she says she edits out the part I'm slurring because No, she's I'm fabulous because she's taught me about all the media along the way, which, like, props to you. I don't think people know, like, especially with, like, social media and the influencers and stuff, just how much work goes into all of, like, you know, the YouTube channels or even your show. Getting B-roll and having people help you, like, it's definitely not an easy thing. So, like, props to you and thank you for thank teaching you. me. Yes. Yeah, it's a full-time job. <laughs> okay. It really is. On top of a full-time job, it's a lot. There's a lot to do. And when you're in the horse capital of the world... There is almost always something going on that you either need to be at or be involved in in one role or another. And it's the number of times that I actually have to say no about going to things. And I hate it because I want to be at all of it. But you can only be in so many places and you can only give the coverage that's due to something important. You know, what's due to it if you have the time and the staff to keep all of that rolling. So if, if you want to educate people and you want to entertain people and you want to be at all the charity events and you want to be at all the fundraisers and you want to Is do that all the things. you're tired looking? <laughs> don't look at my bags. <laughs> do not look at my bags. So, Maria, give us a little example of what we'd watch if we tuned into your... So, I'll have, like, you know, bodywork tips for horses and riders, like, different bodywork that you can do yourself. Like, I really like giving people self-care things that they can do and just mm -hmm. kind of educate you on how you can keep going as a horse person like this week i heard that uh one of the vaulters that i believe went to like the world equestrian games actually passed away and she was a young gal she had contacted me a few weeks ago i was like hey we were hoping to like get a massage in but she was like oh i'm so busy with the farm and so we never got scheduled and then she passed away and so i'm like oh. really like especially for horse people because we're like just send it it's fine like just walk it off but like really taking care of yourself is like really important because I remember thinking while we were chatting, I was like, you know, the farm doesn't work unless you do. And so like you have to take care of yourself. So that's where like body work and stuff comes in and it's not selfish because it can make you a better rider. It can make you like show up in your it life better. It can make you much kinder to yes, people. Yes, for people. <laughs> yeah, no. And so like self-care is really important and it's not just like a luxury that you do because, you know, it's, you know. No, it's true. And I think as equestrians, the, one of the things that the reason that we focus a lot on self-care and often have segments and little pieces that are relevant to that is because horse people, dog people, they always put their four-legged family first and they always, most of them feed their four-legged family first. They usually take their four-legged friend to the vet first mm -hmm. rather than themselves to the doctor. What's the doctor? Yeah, <laughs> exactly no, my real. point, right? It, it is, it's so true that we prioritize our animals. Actually, I have a room full of people right now who prioritize their animals over themselves. Every yeah. single person in the studio or until I'm looking at right now puts their four-legged before themselves. And I think that's something that we do. And I think it's important that we do that because they, we're their voice and we domesticated them and so we need to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good, but I think the other piece of that is we also need to take care of ourselves. Yeah. And that gets missed a lot. And that's why sometimes I go two or three weeks without seeing you mm -hmm. or Dr. Bruce and I start falling apart. Right. And when I'm falling apart, then I go, okay, I've got no choice. I can't move <laughs> my neck falling anymore. Apart. <laughs> yeah. I, I go until I hit migraine mode and I'm out for like three days. It's horrible, but like, you know, we still do it. And like self-care doesn't need to be like massage or something. You can take a hot Epsom salt bath. You can hang out with your friends. Mm -hmm. Like we hung out last weekend and mm -hmm. like we've known each other for years and we've never actually hung out outside of like Work horse stuff. events. Yeah. And so it's like, mm -hmm. it's true. yeah. Try, so this is kind of watching a show that's going to teach you how to 
do better for yourself. Yeah. And then get some fun stories on different equestrians that are gonna. Yeah, because I get a lot of fun, interesting people on the table. Like, it's awesome. On the is table it, it, with Maria. Like, yes. It's like going the to the barber and they tell all the <laughs> no, secrets. No, it's definitely like that. <laughs> I tell her all I my secrets. Sure every, I make sure on the show that everybody gets to see their stuff first before I post it because I'm like, no. <laughs> Are you sure you want that no. out there? <laughs> yeah, no. Well, Maria, that noise, believe it or not, means we have to go to break. But Maria is going to be with us for the last segment of the show as well. So, Midnight Rose Equestrian, find her, like her, and the name of the podcast is. American Horse Story. American Horse Story. So check it out, subscribe, and start watching because it's going to be good stuff for you and your horse. Make sure you tune in. We'll be right back. This portion of the Horse Talk Show is brought to you by Peterson Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care, our television broadcast sponsor, Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa, and supporting sponsors, DAC Minerals and Vitamins. Seminole Feed Stores, Lip Chip, Piranha, Pat Myers Electric, Florida HVAC Services, and Ocala Dog Ranch. Faulty wiring is the leading cause of barn fires. I'm Pat with Pat Myers Electric. Equine facilities have special electrical needs. The knowledgeable and licensed team of electricians at Pat Myers Electric will ensure that you can achieve your vision for a beautiful, safe, and functional horse facility. From new construction to rewiring and updating, the Pat Myers Electric team is ready to jump in and help keep your horses safe. With a small farm of our own, we truly understand the unique concerns of the horse owner. Don't take chances. For all your current barn needs, go to patmyerselectric.com. This show is brought to you in part by Seminole Feed Stores, family-owned since 1934. Manufacturing fixed formula horse feeds with mindful monitoring and quality ingredients right here in Ocala in an all-natural, non-medicated feed mill. Seminole Feed, simply the world's best and safest feed. Like them on Facebook now or find them at SeminoleFeed.com. Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care seeks to be a leading international veterinary practice that provides state-of-the-art veterinary care to their patients while fostering professional relationships with their clients that stand the test of time. For 24-7 and the best in equine care, check out Peterson and Smith at petersonsmith.com or like them on Facebook now for more information. The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Hey, this is Buck Brandman. You're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Back on the Horse Talk Show presented by Peterson Smith Equine Hospital in complete care. Thank you to Larson Farms, our television broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa, Louisa Barton, here in the studio with... Eric Ryan Anderson and Eddie Leedy from the Florida Mountain. We want to start this segment off with a couple of minutes interview that Equus Television created yesterday for us and made sure it was posted on a very, very important day, Memorial Day. Here it is. Martin here with Eric Ryan Anderson. We're going to find out what all this is about. Eric, what are you doing here today? I just heard you say this is the coolest thing you've ever done. Oh, oh my God. I want to try to tell you this without sniveling. <laughs> this is bad to the bone. We have all of our all of our armed forces colors, our state flag and our POW flag, and old glory here. And we're going to present the colors here at the National Cemetery in Bushnell to the multitudes. And we're here with the men and women that have passed and that are buried here. If you ever want to get in touch with yourself, this is the place to come first thing in the morning. The men and women that are buried here have dedicated their lives to the freedom that 
many of us take for granted. This is the United States of America, the land of the free, because of these men and women that are here. And as we watch the things that go on in our country, understand the things that divide us, the man, woman, black, white, male, female, the, the Democrat, Republican, none of that matters here. We're Americans here. This is where Americans come to celebrate the lives and the liberty that we love so much. This is the United States of America at its finest. And for us to be allowed to present the colors on this day, my gosh, that'll humble you. Man, I love this country. I hope you do too, because there may become a time here real soon we're gonna have to do this again. Lord, I hope it's not that way. But know this, there's a lot of men and women that'll die for this country. God bless America, Semper Fidelis. Amen. And you know what? I'd love to be up there, but since I'm not, I'm honored to wipe your boots today. <laughs> Thank you for your service you and bet. all that you do. You bet, sweetie. Louisa Barton here, trying not to cry, <laughs> for the Horse Talk Show. It's hard not to tear up. <laughs> it was uh, an amazing, incredible experience <clears throat> to be there. And without the Florida Mounted, all of that wouldn't have happened yesterday. It was amazing uh, to be able to be there at the Florida National Cemetery on such an important day. And I'm just going to tell you, I had several people invite me to the beach and to do all sorts of other outdoor relaxing. And I was so proud to be there and to just clean his boots and do whatever else I could to, uh, to help. So it was just an amazing, very emotional time. And... I don't think there's anything quite like horses. And when you take horses to an event like that to, to represent the different arms of the military forces, it's just really, it's just an amazing thing. And it actually reminds me of one of the reasons I moved to America. Thank you both for what you do. Thank you. Well, thank you to the riders. Uh, most people think, you know, you just show up, climb on a horse, and there you are. Every one of those riders had hundreds of hours getting acclimated with their horse, building a relationship with their horse, and make it where they could feel comfortable in a crowd with a horse. Now, we've all been out to some of these big areas, like even the, the World Equestrian Center, and you'll have people say, talk quietly or don't make any loud noise, don't move real quick. Well, you're riding horses into the middle of a national cemetery on Memorial Day and people are taking pictures and there's stuff flying and different people running around. There is so much going on and those horses have to remain calm and present our national colors. And right there you see, you see the line of our horses and each of them are stepping out as the battle hymn or the hymns are being played for all the branches of the service. And the national anthem was played prior to that. We did a Pledge of Allegiance. We're asking an 1,100, 1,200 pound horse that's used to be in a uh, an animal of prey, a prey animal, one that sometimes just something running across the field like a plastic bag can cause them to run right through their butt. And now you've put them out here in the middle of a big grassy area with all those people and all those flags blowing. Those horses did incredible and those riders did a phenomenal job. And it wasn't just about that. They were there because they respect the men and women that are buried out there in that cemetery. And like I said in that interview right there, you come out there in the morning when the fog's coming up off the ground and you sit in one of those little chairs that they have at the National Cemetery and look over those graves right there and ask yourself, are you the kind of American worth dying for? And if you're not, you better get in touch with yourself because those men and women did just that. They died so we could be who we are today. You know, I was in awe of how many not just how many burial stones there were, how many flags there were. I was just in awe of seeing, I have never been at a cemetery like that before. And I was quite taken aback by, you don't, until you're standing there, you don't realize just how many there actually are. And then seeing, and it, I actually got huge goosebumps, seeing those horses going past those gravestones with the different flags was just, I, don't, I think there honestly isn't a much more priceless view than that to me seeing you with old Rory and then looking across there just it just absolutely the, there's just a, a feeling that you can't even even explain or put words to it's just so much respect for the people who've paid the ultimate price for keeping us free and it's just a it's just incredible really seeing I, seeing you guys doing this just blew me I away I have a spirit equine therapy and thanks to Florida Mounted 
and Tammy and Eddie Leedy that we have that. It's a nonprofit where we get to uh, interact with veterans, first responders, Gold Star family members, and spending quality, quiet time with them on the back of a horse will absolutely make your eyes leak and your heart hurt. I've, I've had, and, and I don't want to say it was a pleasure, but I have been there and listened to the Gold Star families that have gone through so much now that their, their person has passed and did so in the defense of the freedom of this country. We did a, uh, about a month ago, we went to a concert and it was, there was like 40 Gold Star children there. And it was a fundraiser for those children so they could go to college. They even had a job fair for them. And they were being taken care of by the community, not the government, the community. The other men and women who knew their moms and dads were there to support them. The American people absolutely 100% will do the right thing for the right reasons. We don't need the government in here telling us how to get it done. Yesterday at the National Cemetery, I believe 100%, we showed a credit to those men and women and we delivered those colors and we did it in a way that in my opinion was absolutely outstanding. Nice. Absolutely. So to tell you a little bit about who Florida Mounted is, uh, we came together I think a little over a year ago. Uh, I was at the Sheriff's Office for 15 years, their Mounted Unit Commander there. Eric had served in Lake County for numerous years down there. And, uh, you know, the agencies kind of went in a different direction. We had uh, had a reputation in the community for doing a lot of things that nobody else would. Parking details, working rodeo, securities, of those things. And those people felt like there was a void and had voiced their opinion that, hey, who's, who's going to take care of us now? Uh, my wife, Tammy, at that time said, uh, I have a nonprofit. Let's don't miss a beat on this. We've got a great group of equestrians made up of former law enforcement, veterans, uh, things of that nature. So we pulled all our resources together. Uh, we had a couple of meetings. I had the honor of being uh, elected as the commander, and we just moved forward and haven't looked back since then. Eddie, it's amazing. And that sound means we have to take a break. And Pete's actually going to swap seats with me, and he's got a few questions for these chaps. But I'm going to tell you what an amazing honor that was yesterday and having the support. Eddie, you were on foot for a change, and, and I was there with Tammy, and it was just an um, amazing experience. Pete's going to ask lots more in the next segment, so stay with us. Larson Farms is our TV broadcast sponsor. Mr. Richard Larson, a man of great integrity, cares about every single bale of hay and about taking care of his customers. He also has a huge heart for those genuinely in need. Larson Farms, Idaho's finest alfalfa. Hey there, horsemen. Are you tired of technology that doesn't fit your way of life? Lipchip is ready to revolutionize your barn. Built by horsemen, for horsemen. Lipchip knows how you ride. If you're tired of carrying around paperwork, dealing with long trailer lines, and juggling all your horse's details while trying to compete, then the answer is the Hooflink system. Simply implant, scan, and unlock. Each scan reveals everything you need to work, compete, and to protect your horses. View current health paperwork, pre-register for your next event, and even check in on your horse's health. Horsemen, let's keep our horses safe and make our lives at the barn a little easier. The the future is here, and the future is lip chip. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now, or go to feeddac.com. DAC. It makes a world of difference. This hour of the Horse Talk Show is presented by Palm Chevrolet in Ocala, where the entire team is committed to making your experience in sales and service hassle-free and easier than ever with no games or gimmicks. Come in and visit on Southwest College Road or online at palmchevrolet.com. A second-to-none experience with all the amenities. Palm Chevy, find new roads. 
The Equine Performance and Innovative Centre, situated on 30 pristine acres in the horse capital of the world, is one of the finest and most complete conditioning and rehab centres for equines and canines in the nation, including an equine hyperbaric chamber, aqua pacer, water treadmill, cold water leg spa, equine swimming pool, Eurosizer and more. Epic equine veterinarians specializing in rehab and conditioning. For more information, go to epcrehab.com or find them on social media. Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show. Have you ever heard of a horse that can talk? Listen to this. With your host, Louisa Barton. She's literally in love with every horse. Presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. She's back in the saddle again. And now here's your host. Pretty, pretty. Louisa Barton. She's a Brit. She's got the gift of the gab. And her guests are fab. The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. We're back to the Horse Talk Show. This segment's brought to you by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. And we'd like to thank our sponsor. Uh, whoa, just went out of my mind. Uh, Paul, uh, Palm Chevrolet and... Are we I, making you nervous? Yes, sweetie? you're making me nervous. And Luis is just going to leave you hanging. Yeah, 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 she's she's not just silence. Silence, yeah. silence from yeah. the peanut You're on your own, yeah. cowboy. Hey. <laughs> Larson Hay, Idaho's <laughs> finest alfalfa. I'm Dancing Pete Rhoda, and I'm here with Eddie mm-hmm. and Eric. And we're going to talk more about the Florida Mounted. Mm-hmm. And we've been talking about there's a little excitement going on in Ocala. And Eddie, mm-hmm. tell us about your big announcement that's coming out uh so we're we're in a position where we're kind of uh making the announcement now it's been a little bit of a secret in ocala and marion county that ocala police department uh the police chief mike balkin had approached me uh in florida mounted about having horses on the square at night and over at the marketplace uh on the weekends so Several months ago, uh, me and my wife, Tammy, traveled to Tennessee and uh, purchased two horses up there, uh, brought them back here to Ocala, have started training with them. Uh, As most of you know that know me, I'm retired law enforcement, but I'm still certified. So now I have actually taken my oath of office with uh, the mayor and the chief for the city of Ocala. So I'm once again, as the old saying goes, back in the saddle. So... We, uh, we anticipate probably within the next 30 days of uh, bringing the horses into the city where they'll be seen. We still have some uh, equipment that we have on back order we're trying to get in and all. But we're really excited not only to have these two horses, and when I say they're gorgeous, they're, they're drop-dead gorgeous. You're talking about two horses that are, you know, 17-plus hands, uh, Pertron Frijon crosses, uh, they're doing amazing right now in training, so uh, we're anxious to, to get those here on the square. Talking about sponsors and some of the same sponsors, Larson's Hay and many other sponsors, I'm not going to mention all those, but we do have several sponsors that have participated in this. We are blessed to live in an equine community where you get that kind of support that uh, people that are helping us feed the horses, uh, take care of the horses, provide transportation for the horses. It's been extremely uh, overwhelming and rewarding to be part of this program. So we're gonna go downtown some evening or during the day and see horses in the horse capital of the world. On the downtown square. Protecting the citizens. Correct. Wow. And they're as big as a small town. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's great. So. Let's talk a little bit about training. That's why Louisa wanted me to come in here. Mm-hmm. So when you guys get into these trainings, like you, we were talking about off air, Eric, was how much time does it take to get the horses prepared for that? And then same thing with you, Eddie, getting those horses prepared to actually go downtown and have crowd control and be able to support other police officers. That's, that's a question that we get asked a lot. How long does it take? And it's just like... 
uh, children, young people, young children who are, you're trying to teach them something. There's really no set time. But as a trainer, what you do is you work your horse to success and you never make it something that they dislike. You want them to be encouraged. You always want to encourage your horse when they're doing the right thing. When it's not going the way you want to, the best thing you can do is settle, relax. And if you train with patience and consistency, you will out-train anybody that's pulling on reins, hurting mouths, or kicking horses. And I see it all the time. Somebody's kicking their horse. He didn't do what I wanted to. He screwed me over. Well, I promise you he didn't do it on purpose. Have you ever had a discussion with your significant other, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and they didn't understand what you meant? Is it possible this horse didn't have a clue what you were talking about, and you're on the back of that horse acting like a three-year-old throwing a temper tantrum? You don't deserve to be on that horse. Can, can I take you on the road? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hand. Eric's going to talk to you. Eric's going to talk to you about why your horse isn't doing it. I love it. And, and we often, and Eddie says it too, we can tell a lot about the individual riding the horse by the way the horse reacts and acts. Right. Honestly, if you've got a quiet rider and somebody that's patient, you will notice that in the horse. And I, I train horses every day, and people will come out and go, well, why does he do that for you, but he won't do it for me? It's the communication. Yes. And it's the patience. And it's honestly, my heart rate is about three times less than yours. I'm relaxing and asking this horse to do it and encouraging the horse to get what I want. I'm not, I'm not out there with any expectation other than to continue to go as long as we're succeeding and always encourage the horse. Very good. So, so Eddie, when you're getting these horses prepared for crowd control or movement or helping other police officers, What's the biggest thing you really got to teach these horses? So with us, and, and it, there's an old saying that any time you go to an event, if there's chaos and danger, you can tell the first responders because when everyone's running from that, the first responders are going to it. And that's what we really want of these horses. We want when everything is in chaos, these horses will calmly do what we want them to do. And the way you do that is, is like Eric said, you, you build that trust and that relationship and that partnership. And, and then you build on that every day. And, and you have to be careful because you have a huge responsibility. When, when a horse, and you've developed that relationship, that horse tells you, I don't want to do this or I'm scared. And then they turn to you and you tell them, let's do it anyway. You have a huge responsibility to make sure they're successful in that environment. If not, you'll be running backwards. Uh, that's why in training, you know, we, we, we ride totally different in other equestrian groups. We ride boot to boot. We ride close contact. We want our horses shoulder to shoulder so somebody can't come through a line of horses. But if you allow your horse to reach over and bite my horse, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not mad at your horse. Horses are horses. I'm, I'm upset with you. Right. It's your responsibility because my horse doesn't necessarily want to be in that environment, but I'm telling my horse, you're safe, you're okay, we can do this. And if I get bit or my horse gets bit by another person, then we, we go backwards. So we're, we're constantly in communication with each other of, you know, help us be successful with these horses it's repetition we we take the small things and we build on it and we go at the horse's pace some of them are much quicker to to absorb it and move forward some of them need a lot more patience but as eric says if you are spurring and taking a crop and forcing a horse into an environment it doesn't want to go into you you're going to get in trouble right. real quick and it's your fault everything that happens is your fault as a rider so what kind of things like i'm assuming guns being shot off of we use smoke uh, guns okay. uh the, the 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 event we just did at the memorial uh and i wasn't prepared for it eric eric is is i won't say an overachiever but eric is <laughs> always you know trains for the worst case scenario and hope for the best eric had spent roughly six hours i think the day before riding the cemetery down there I, I would roughly say there was an excess of 100 flags with probably a 10 mile an hour wind. Wow. Well, if you know much about horses and you've got that many flags blowing in the wind, as well as each rider carrying a flag, and then when they lined up, the wind was to their back. So those flags were blowing in front of those horses. And you know, the average person has no idea how much intensity that was for a horse just to stand there patiently. Well, 
We want to really thank you guys for coming out, what you're doing. Love it. Eric, heard you're running for sheriff. What county? That'll be Sumter County. Oh. That'll be Sumter <laughs> County, brother. Hey, I, I'd vote for you if I was there. I appreciate that, brother. I really do. All right. Well, that's well, the end of our segment. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you on the next segment. Thank you to the presenting sponsor of this portion of the Horse Talk Show, Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to our TV broadcast sponsor, Larson Farms, Idaho's finest alfalfa. Also, thank you to supporting sponsors, Nirvana Medical Spa, TT Distributors, Summit Joint Performance, Equigreen, Midnight Rose Equestrian, the Florida Horse Park, Horse Farms Forever, and the Equine Performance and Innovative Center. The team of professionals at Equifence of Florida specialize in equestrian fencing, offering great communication, quality fencing, and all done in a timely manner. Reliable service with horse safety in mind all the time. Also offering customized residential, vinyl, wood, aluminium, and chain link fences services. Equifence of Florida, quality fencing done right to keep your animals safe. For more information, find Equifence of Florida on Facebook now. This show is brought to you in part by Seminole Feed Stores, family owned since 1934. Manufacturing fixed formula horse feeds with mindful monitoring and quality ingredients right here in Ocala in an all natural, non medicated feed mill. Seminole Feed, simply the world's best and safest feed. Like them on Facebook now or find them at SeminoleFeed.com. <laughs> My name is Dr. Natalie Solomon. I formulated Equigreen with cutting edge science and technology alongside the passion that is represented by a lifelong love of horses. I created a product that I would trust for my horses because they deserve nothing but the best for their bodies. Horses rely on us to take care of them, to love them, to respect them. This is how Equigreen came to life. Equigreen, CBD for your horse that you can trust. Does your farm need a facelift? Has the harsh Florida climate left your barns, stable doors, and fences stained? j &S Pressure Washing has a professional team who can exceed your expectations and restore your farm to its former glory. Get rid of dust and cobwebs that can cause allergies and health issues for horses, and keep your horses safe by limiting fire hazards in the barn. j &S Pressure Washing can clean your house, your barns, your fences, and your driveway, and you can count on dependable and professional services. For more information, call Stephen at 352-502-5355. The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. This is Charlotte Cannon, and you are listening to the Horse Talk Show. Back on the Horse Talk Show, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our television broadcast sponsor. Idaho's finest alfalfa. <laughs> Here in the studio with Dancing Pete Rhoda wow. from Complimentary Horsemanship, Maria Arfoon from Midnight Rose Equestrian. And we are switching it up right now to tell you how to grow grass better mm. and how not to have what looks like a six lane highway going through your field. Here's Dan Milstead from Equine Tip. Stay with us. Louisa Barton here for the Horse Talk Show, the Equus TV Network, and 97.3 The Sky. And we are doing a walk and stop with Dan Milstead from Equine Turf. We talked a little bit about him. We've walked through a paddock that's kind of had a lot of, of tree coverage. We fortunately did not find anything uh, poisonous that we were concerned about in there for horses. So we're now out in a paddock that doesn't have very much tree coverage. This is a property, by the way, that barely had a blade of grass on it when I purchased it. So we have actually been trying to bring grass back. Um, we did put winter rye down and we also did a fertilizer uh, last summer and a fall fertilizer. So we're now in the spring uh, and we're, we're moving towards the summer. So Dan is now going to walk with me and we're gonna have a look at this field. 
Uh, we do have a horse grazing in here who's obviously brought the grass down somewhat. Um, so Dan, let's go ahead and start walking oh. and let's see what you see. Now, um, you mentioned that you do see some rye left, yes. um, which obviously in the summertime heat is going to go away completely, yes. which is sad. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that there isn't anything in Florida at this time that kind of can replace the rye. The rye is fantastic because it, it comes up so quickly and it stays throughout those winter months filling in those gaps. Uh, but before I get to that, let's just go back to this alleyway because yeah. you did mention the six line, lane highway yeah. versus the... Yeah, and that's what I was just kind of making it so you, you know, understand easily comparing it. Like I see the fence here, the gate, the round pin shade. So I see four things I need to think about and, and horses, animals, uh, were creature or habit. So this looks like a little single lane road. What we wanna do is make it like anywhere on your property a six lane, like I-75 where there's different options because it's going to be real hard to get so turf here. right here because it's it's a high energy zone i call it's a high it energy zone. <laughs> yeah, it so. also happens to be where flynn rolls yes he also loves to get in the dirt right there and kick up sure and sure. so he's fairly big when yeah. he gets down in it and and kicks up so he yeah. makes quite a mess you know yeah so it's just something to think about you know try not to put everything in one area yeah you know if you can move it around and and just rotate, rotate, you know, also your animals, you know, because like this time of the year, our nighttime temps aren't all the way where we want them, where our grass is to grow. And, you know, sometimes we get impatient and want to fertilize too early. Well, Florida is pretty sandy. And if you put that fertilizer out and your grass is still dormant, what's going to happen the sun's going to volatize your fertilizer it's going to leach through bottom line is you pretty much wasting your money right. so we we want that grass growing before we fertilize okay and it's just you want to get everything for your buck so right be patient watch your nighttime temperatures 65 and above for at least 10 days in a row okay good to and, know you know and then you know, there's nothing more frustrating than spending all that money on fertilizer. You put it out and nothing happened. Right. Well, it was a timing issue. Yeah. So you got to watch, so watch timing's your timing. very important. Maximize very your, good. your strategy. Yeah. So we'll walk on now. Um, we're kind of out in the more sunny areas. I have a irrigation stand hey, that I move the, around. Yeah. And I, um, you know, I try to spray the different areas. Ideally, obviously, is if you have irrigation mm. in the ground, but not well, everybody no. has that with paddocks. So. And, and like this area I see right here, you see how the rye, the rye grass is good. We've had a couple of afternoons that got hot. Was that last week? It was mm -hmm. close to 90. Yes. And, and it's burning off, but that stays under the shade. It's cool and it looks like it's a little It's a nice little, like and lovely it green moisture. area there, yeah. yes. And that's one good thing if, if you go and overseed your say a big pasture and you see it coming up patchy well it's any low indentions holding moisture longer shading the seed to keep moisture so the seed can germinate so i i'm a big stickler i like to irrigate the seed because i know what can happen you spend all that money it's a gamble you're you're gambling on weather yeah you know and that one other thing i see a lot oh it's going to rain i'm going to put my ryegrass out but that doesn't make sense to me. So if you put, if it rains tomorrow and you put your seed out today or put your seed out today knowing the rain's coming tomorrow, well, what ha what about the next 10 days after that rain? Right. You put that rye grass out and the seed's going to sit there for four or five days and do nothing. Well, now there's no rain, but you put it out when it was raining. So when it starts popping, if there's no moisture, you're going to have splotchy seed come up. So it's just, you know, and some people say, oh, I put it out every year and it comes up. Well, it's just one of them things. Yeah, you, you, maybe you, it could you, be better. You, yeah, it it's a gamble. It's still a gamble. So it's just so, one thing to think about. Um, yeah. We'll go ahead and kind of do a weed check in here because I do know there are some weeds in here. Yeah. Um, there are some some. You things. got a little oak sap coming up. That's natural around the trees. You know? And there is chemistry to 
if you want to get the little suckers out. But yeah, you know, it doesn't hurt the horses. So okay, so, so not yeah. any concerns. Nothing. Yeah. That, nothing that you want to tell us to watch out for. Now, is that a, a concern? Yeah, this is in the pokeweed family. It it's looks easy. like a pokeweed. Yeah, yeah, and I don't like them because some horses can mess with them. But, you know, and look at that big root, yeah. you, you know. So, actually, uh, weeds, will, these are called like a two-bore root. Mm -hmm. It's better with a chemical, so the chemical can go all the way through the plant down to the roots, you know. When you want a slow kill, because a lot of times you'll see commercials, oh, spray it today and tomorrow. It said, all that's doing is taking the moisture out of the leaf, and it's not killing the plant. But society wants everything now 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 i like seeing a slow death you, you know <laughs> well because i know it's getting i get excited slow talking about death. them yeah yeah, yeah. All right so you know be do your research do your homework find somebody there's other people like me out here and where you you spend all that money you want your you want it to work right right so we want a good slow death to go all the like creeping indigo, it can have six foot roots under it. So, you know, you want that chemical to go all the way down. If you, if, like I pulled that, I pretty much broke the root. Mm -hmm. So you know what's gonna happen in a couple of weeks. It's gonna come right back up. So, you know, find the right chemistry there and there's safe ones out there that, you, you know. You can use yeah. horses. Yeah. I like animals, better than people so i'm always making sure i do the right <laughs> right thing so yeah so That's yeah fantastic. yeah so it's just something to think about and uh, and the, google's a wonderful thing there's you know google noxious weeds in central florida or wherever you live and you know i'm a phone call away and there's a lot of you know resources okay. mm -hmm. to find out yeah. Yeah. wonderful yeah uh, we're going to wrap up this segment and we're going to move on actually to another paddock um, it's a kind of a little bit of shade and sun so we have more uh, with Dan Milstead from Equine Turf Louisa Barton for the Horse Talk Show thank you to the presenting sponsor of this portion of the Horse Talk Show Palm Chevrolet your hometown Chevy experience thank you to our TV broadcast sponsor Larson Farms Idaho's finest alfalfa also thank you to supporting sponsors Nirvana Medical Spa TT Distributors, Summit Joint Performance, Equigreen, Midnight Rose Equestrian, the Florida Horse Park, Horse Farms Forever, and the Equine Performance and Innovative Center. <laughs> The Equine Performance and Innovative Center, situated on 30 pristine acres in the horse capital of the world, is one of the finest and most complete conditioning and rehab centers for equines and canines in the nation, including an equine hyperbaric chamber, aqua pacer, water treadmill, cold water leg spa, equine swimming pool, Eurosizer, and more. Epic equine veterinarians specializing in rehab and conditioning. For more information, go to epcrehab.com or find them on social media. This show was brought to you in part by TT Distributors, dedicated to bringing their customers the largest selection of quality horse supplements, products, and farrier supplies in Florida at affordable prices. Also online at ttdistributors.com. The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. You're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Back on the final segment of the Horse Talk Show for this week, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Hay, our TV broadcast sponsor. Idaho's finest alfalfa. Louisa Barton here in the studio with Dancing Pete Roder from Complimentary Horsemanship, and Maria Arfoon is with us from Midnight mm -hmm. Rose Equestrian. And we're going to start off with... Dancing Pete's Tip of the Week brought to you by Wildlife Works. Dancing Pete's Tip of the Week brought to you by Complimentary Horsemanship.
This tip is sponsored by WildlifeWorksLLC.com for your unwanted wild critters removal. <laughs> we get into it because Isaac always adds something to Wildlife Works. So we're like, what's the new creature? And he goes, I didn't have time. Damn Damn it. It. There, there's one right there, so we're good. Yeah, okay. we're good. Yeah. So the tip of the week is create harder puzzles on the ground so that when you get onto the saddle, it makes it easier. So harder puzzles, so you build it up to harder puzzles, so you start easy, build it up on the ground, and then when you get in the saddle, make those puzzles easy. So an example would be, let's say I asked the horse to trot for three laps, right? Well, on the ground, I might build that up to 20 laps, and then I get in the saddle, and I only do that circle twice and stop him, and he goes, <gasps> That was easy. I've, I've done 20 on the ground. I can do two in the saddle, no problem. It's great for jumping too. Oh. Ground pulls too. Yes, ma'am. So just think about that when you're training is make it eat a little bit harder on the ground, meaning create those puzzles a little bit higher. And then when you get in the saddle, he'll go, oh, will you get on my back and can we do this again? Because it'll be a lot easier. It was impressive hearing from Eddie and Eric on things that they do with with those horses to get them ready for all of that yesterday. It was amazing, really amazing. And, and you know, even one horse was got a little you know scared, which is quite understandable in all of that. But at the end, everybody's impression. And I said this. I said, listen, if you're not a horse person and you don't work with horses all the time, it's impressive to see somebody on a horse. So if I look from the outside in from my perspective and take myself off as a, a non-horse owner for a minute, seeing those horses come up there with those flags and stand up there for that ceremony was impressive. But even to have one get a little bit, you know, iffy for a little bit and have Eddie right there on the ground to, you know, to calm the horse down, and then it was fine. And it's amazing just to see these, these animals that could throw us off and gallop off if they want, willingly be there for and do that is just, it's a testament to the riders and the trainers. And there is no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts, no, it's so true. Ocala Dog Ranch, Neil Hennessy has your, horse talk show goes to the dogs, come on. <laughs> the horse talk show goes to the dogs at Ocala Dog Ranch. Neil with the Ocala Dog Ranch. Always be happy with your dog, especially if you want to uh, train with them. Don't call your dog and do something nasty. Don't have your dog come to you and then clip its nails. Go get your dog. Don't call your dog and give him a bath. Go get your dog. Some dogs will get really uh, negative about coming towards you if you do something negative to them when you, when you collect them. And if you have used up the word come so many times and they don't come for you, then change it to another word. Maybe have it here. So don't call your dog and do something negative to them. Be happy, happy dog will come to you and one day you might need them to come run into you in case there's an emergency going on that they don't know about and you want your dog to come lickety split to you. Neil at Ocala Dog Ranch. I'm always happy with my dog. Same. Yeah. And I'll tell you something, when my dogs see me getting in the truck, they think they're getting in the truck to go to Ocala Dog Ranch and that makes them happy. And then I tell them, no, sorry, you're staying at home. And then they look sad. So. Mm. I know. Even my dog wants to climb in your car. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't climb in everybody else's car. But he's Ocala like, oh. Dog Ranch smell. <laughs> That's it, yeah, I love Ocala Dog Ranch. So now we're going to switch it up to the spark of Ocala. Here's Pat Myers. At Pat Myers Electric, we're constantly training to be our absolute best. for all your current barn needs. Hello, Pat with Pat Myers Electric, here with your horsepower electrical tip of the week, helping to keep your barn and horses safe. Today, I wanna talk about, are you taking care of the people that help take care of your horses? For instance, are you running out extension cords for your farrier constantly? Or are you having to move your horse into an inconvenient area for the vet because you have light fixtures out. If you do, that's okay. Don't be afraid to ask an expert. Most of these problems have simple solutions. If your horse is sick, you don't just guess, you ask the vet for advice. If your horse has a problem with their feet, you ask the farrier. 
most professionals are here to help you with whatever issues come up. Don't be afraid of what they're going to say. Be afraid of not knowing what the answer is. Pat with Pat Myers Electric, Ocala's premier equestrian electrician. We could use that Do tip. Do not be afraid to ask for professional help, Pete. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> he does get professional help from the horses. <laughs> yeah. This is true, actually. That's therapy for most of us that love horses. Yeah. It's amazing. That's why we can't afford regular therapy is because we pay for the horses. <laughs> this is true. But you know what? Spending even a half an hour out just in the round pen, the arena, with your horse is massive endorphins, especially if you work in town every day or work inside for your job and you don't get out well, every it's, single it's day. It's ma major endorphins if you're going slow and relaxing. It's major I've endorphins I've I've seen, for me. I've seen people get in the round pen and lose their minds. Oh, really? No. <laughs> for me, it's just... Well, you know, on, um, was it Saturday? I think it was Saturday that Flynn was in the, my Mustang was in the very, very front of the front paddock, as far away as he could be from the round pen. And I went in the round pen and he, the round pen's big. It's almost like the size of an arena. And he knows when we're in there, we're going to do something, you know, it's going to be time for him to focus. And I went in and I was moving some things around, cones and pool noodles and all sorts of other things and I dumped out a bucket of water and I just called I just said Flynn Flynn boop. and he took off high speed gallop all the way from that paddock all the way in and brought himself in the round pen like I remember yep. seeing the video yes it was so cute. I'm ready to work <laughs> and I thought that's really nice that you want to come in here and uh, do and that alone gave me endorphins I, I always love just, that, but I also feel kind of called out when my horses are like, what's your problem? You could be working with us, but this is a you problem. I know, right? You have to mow or, or do something, some farm chores, but No, it's, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's where I got the farmer's stand from. Yeah, that's a, it's a horse person thing, you know? So, uh, so we don't get enough time that we, we always want, especially if we do have a full-time job that's not related necessarily to being on the farm, but it's a, an amazing, wonderful experience to spend that time with your horse but, even if you have a half an hour and i love what what pat's saying can apply to so many different things especially in, when i come i'm very honest i'm like this might not be the horse for you or mm -hmm. two years maybe before you can ride it or and i say longer because they're going to get disappointed if i say two months and we're not on but i'm that's my opinion to help you not like right. pat's saying Right. Ask a and it's based on your experience from That's years right. of doing it and having to troubleshoot because you don't always get to think inside the box while you're training. And I broke both my elbows and almost my neck with when I used to do it the other way. Yeah. Same. Same. It's not worth it. it. The time taken and the patience that you have with your horse to get it prepared, it takes that kind of dedication to do what those horses did yesterday for that Memorial Day celebration. So I think that's a, that's a huge, huge important thing to remember. Do not forget that Gentle Carousel are going to start their reading program on June the 6th, please. And if you are in the Ocala area, come downtown to the downtown market mm -hmm. so you can learn all about reading with horses. It's absolutely priceless to see these kids uh, with the books and with with this miniature horse and just having this opportunity here in Ocala. So, And I bet there won't be a dry eye in the place on it's when amazing. That mini comes out. That's amazing. Amazing. So thank you for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. Of course, we'll be back at the same time next week, whether you're in Ocala, Marion County, the horse capital of the world or not. Happy horsing around until the same time next week. See you next time.